Hello, everyone. My name is Japara Denson. I want to say hi, greetings to my fellow coders and healthcare professionals and health information management or health information technology professionals. Thank you so much for being with us today and for your continued service in the industry. Thank you for pushing the industry forward and advancing healthcare all over this world. My name is Japara Denson. I am the Health Information Technology Program Coordinator at Florida Gateway College in Lake City, Florida, and I also serve as full-time faculty, and I have the honor and the privilege of serving on the NEFEMA Board of Directors. Uh, my current position as, uh, as a director is the advocacy liaison. And I just wanna share a little bit about why I uh, decided to volunteer for NEFEMA and why I am inspired to continue volunteering for NEFEMA. So I gave this question some thought and I came up with three things. So I thought about first, you know, volunteering with NEFEMA is a great opportunity for professional growth. It's a challenge. And I have the opportunity to work alongside some of the brightest minds in the industry. Those who I serve on the board with are experts in their field. They come with a wealth of knowledge. They come from a variety of backgrounds and educational levels. And it's beautiful. It's a challenge professionally because they inspire me to reach higher in my, in my profession, in my career. They help me stay accountable. It's growth. It's an opportunity for growth. So that's the first reason why. Another reason why I have decided to volunteer and why I enjoy and will continue volunteering is because of modeling. So I have students. I'm a, I'm a faculty member. I'm an instructor. And I want to model for my students what I encourage them to do all throughout their time in our HIT programs. I encourage them to get involved. I encourage them to volunteer with various associations and on various committees. And in me, by me encouraging them to do that, they need to see it, right? So I need to model for my students what it looks like to get involved at the regional level, at the state level, at the national level. And so I have the opportunity to do that through my service with NEFEMA. I share with them all the time, you know, what, what, what we're learning, what we're doing and ways that they can get involved. So it's a great example. It's a great example for my students. I thought about a third reason. So number three, my third reason for volunteering with NEFEMA has to do with, oh my gosh, partnership. There we go. I was thinking about programs and I was thinking about professionalism, but partnerships. So partnerships, being able to collaborate with a variety of individuals, being able to collaborate with industry leaders and thought leaders creates this beautiful atmosphere for partnership. And through my service with NEFEMA, I found that I've been able to have what Napoleon Hill refers to as the mastermind group or the mastermind alliance. You know, I think about that because, yes, on a, at a certain level, I can get things done on my own. You can do things by yourself, right? But when you partner up, when you have that mastermind, that, that group of brilliance just in a room or on a Zoom call, the energy is, is magnetic, the energy is released and it takes things to exponential levels. So there's growth beyond growth, there is advancement, things get done uh, at a much more uh, high quality level. And so those partnerships and that network is so important uh, for us as individuals. So those are three reasons why I am inspired to continue my service with the Northeast Florida Health Information Management Association. And I hope that you are inspired to volunteer as well. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for watching. Hello, my name is Jeremy Carey. Um, I'm the secretary for NEFEMA. Uh, when it comes to volunteering, um, I volunteer for both professional and personal reasons. 
Uh, professionally, volunteering gives me the opportunity to meet and work with my peers whom I might not otherwise interact with. This allows me to network, learn more about the industry, and give back to the professional community. Personally, it helps me grow as a person um, by putting me outside of my comfort zone. It provides me with new experiences that help widen my perspective and help me encounter things that I would that I might not encounter in my own job in the industry, but others may encounter and I'll get to learn from those experiences. Um, when it comes to what I like about volunteering, I would say it gives me the satisfaction of giving back. I have a strong sense of duty and responsibility. So I like to give back to the professional community as a way of showing my gratitude to those who have helped me and who have helped other others. Uh, for instance, in my when I was earning my RHIT, all the um, organizations who offer to um, host the professional practice experience like UF Health. And, and volunteering is my way to try and give back and show appreciation for that. And it's something that I find gratifying. Um, so I would like to encourage others to volunteer for a couple of reasons. No matter where you are in life or what your goals are, volunteering can benefit you. The benefit may be different for every person. Self-satisfaction, for instance, a chance to meet new people, um, a chance to network with other uh, industry professionals. There's any number of reasons and no one reason is right or wrong. Whatever you, you're able to gain as much as you want from volunteering. Another reason is volunteering helps keep the community going. For communities to function, participation is necessary. And no matter how large or small your contribution, anything you can provide will help the community. And in turn, the community can help you and it can help others. So with that, I hope others, I hope you and others will consider volunteering. Thank you very much. My name is Jerry Newman, and I'm an assistant HIN manager at UF Health Shands in Gainesville, Florida. Currently, I am serving as a chair for the Florida Health Information Management Association Advocacy and Government Relations Committee. However, I have been actively involved in volunteering in HIM associations since I started as an HIM student at Santa Fe College, volunteering in a variety of positions and other activities for Northeast Fahima, Fahima, and Ahima in positions that include being a committee member, being a committee chair, serving on task forces, and several different board positions. One of my past jobs introduced me to how powerful associations can be and how much volunteering it takes to make these associations successful. Through that job, I learned to believe in the power of volunteering, that together we can impact the future of our profession. Not only do I love getting to meet and interact with new people and go to different places, but I also love that I learn something every time I volunteer, no matter how small the activity. Volunteering allows me to be a part of the inner workings of the activities that drive and impact HIM and ultimately impact our patients. I would encourage everyone to volunteer, even if in just a small capacity. Everyone has something, some experience, some knowledge, some idea to contribute, to share that can make our volunteer activities, our profession, more powerful more relatable, and more meaningful. So my party message to you today is please volunteer. Even the smallest action can make a big impact. My name is Julia McCurry. I'm an uh, JM, an RHIA, and I also have the certification for um, healthcare documentation and implementation support specialist. Um, I'm working currently at Mayo Clinic as a health information management services manager. 
I also volunteer with the Northeast Florida HIM Association or NEFEMA, and I have for um, several years in different capacities. I actually started around 2010, I think I volunteered for a recording secretary position and I ran for office. Uh, the reason that I chose to run was I was really looking to expand you know, um, my resume, it really looks good on a resume if you um, have volunteer and especially leadership positions. Um, and I thought that would help um, open the door to future leadership opportunities within the organization that I was with at the time. Um, I found it very interesting that you learn so much more than you ever thought um, being part of you know, the NEFEMA board, whether you're a board member, a committee member, committee chair, uh, you learn a lot about um, other people's perspectives, other people's workflows, you get to network with people that are at other organizations and get to know them very well. And that also um, leads to conversations later on where we can call each other and say, hey, we, we are having this type of issue. Do you have that? Um, and then sharing ideas back and forth. So I, I really enjoyed that. I was then asked um, to help with the NEFEMA website at the time, and I was helping to update all of the information. Um, after my, my term ended, um, I actually went back for my RHIA around that time and went back to school. And later I um, volunteered again and was president-elect then I was president and now past president of NEFEMA. So back on the board for the last three years, again, I have learned a lot more and you know, developed connections with a lot of other uh, people in the HIM profession, either because they're on the board, they're serving on committees, or just the people that we reach out to for speakers for our lunch and learns and our other events. Uh, it's been very helpful. Um, the most important personal reason why it has been helpful to me as um, some people that know me have heard the story about how Nita Thompson, who was a past president, she was president of NEFEMA at the time, I credit her for saving my husband's life. Uh, the reason I do that is because during a period while I was recording secretary, um, I actually lost my job. It was eliminated um, without notice. And so suddenly I was like, what do I do now? Um, so as soon as I mentioned at a board meeting that I had my position had been eliminated and if anyone had any extra work that they needed help with, I knew we had a spring seminar coming up and I could certainly help prepare agendas, you know, catering orders, whatever needed to be done. And of course, everyone else that was on the meeting, they were, you know, also helpful, like, let me look at St. Vincent and see what we have open. Let me look at Baptist Health and see what jobs we have open. And they're sending me job leads. Even if it wasn't within HEMS, they said, here's something you can get your foot on the door. And then as soon as we have something in HEMS, maybe we can get you in. So in the meantime, um, Anita Thompson sent me a job to actually put on the website um, that there was a supervisor position at Mayo Clinic that was open. And I thought, I don't know if I have a shot, there's probably much more qualified people than I did, but I did apply for it. Um, in the meantime, we had that spring, spring seminar with over a hundred different uh, people. I believe we had like 115, 120 in attendance. And Nita Thompson, as part of that spring sem seminar, um, actually thanked me you know, in front of everyone for all of the extra work that I had put in with the food and the agendas and everything else to, you know, to contribute to making that day a success. Well, there were a couple of people from Mayo Clinic in the audience at the time, including the person who ended up interviewing me for the Mayo supervisor position. So I don't know if that's the reason why, but it certainly didn't help. Um, she did mention later on that she remembered at the spring seminar, Nita Thompson singing my praises. So, um, I know it was a tough race between me and another candidate. Um, ultimately, I did get the job. So uh, six months later, after working in my new role at Mayo Clinic, um, my husband had to have an emergency surgery and a Mayo Clinic surgeon saved his life. So I told Nita that if not for that comment um, that she acknowledged me during that spring seminar um, and maybe the, the volunteer work as well, um, it's possible that I wouldn't have gotten a job. And if my if I was unemployed, <laughs> I don't know where my husband would have gone to have his surgery, probably wouldn't have been at Mayo because we were living quite far. So um, it's possible that he could have died that night. If he if I was at my previous facility, 
I knew the surgeons that probably would have operated on him and I did not have the faith in them um, as I do with the Mayo Clinic surgeons. So um, I've had my own health issues since then. So again, every time I see Nita Thompson, I tell her now, not only did she save my husband's life, but she possibly saved my own as well. So um, the thing I really love about volunteering is that chance to give back to other people because like Nita and like so many other people, um, when I was a recently graduated student or I was in a newly um, established HIM professional, like within those first five years where you're finding your way, there were so many people that took time to help me along the way. They would take time out of their day to show me something, to help answer my questions, or to, you know, give me a recommendation or tell other people, hey, you know, this person over here is doing some great work. Maybe you should take a look at it and, you know, get my name out there, so to speak. So it's all definitely been worth it. Um, and now I'm in a position where I can pay it forward, so to speak, and help the next group of HIM students and new professionals or established professionals that are just looking for a career change or looking for something slightly different that they've been doing. I, I really truly think that we're all here to help each other and support each other and volunteering does give us an opportunity to do that. So I hope the rest of you will think about um, where you wanna be, um, what steps can you do to get there um, and volunteering if you can get in uh, at the internships or if you can even get in as a temporary employee or however you can get in um, the door, um, taking a job that is not the one that you intended at first, an entry level position, even in a scheduling department, wherever um, can help you get your foot in the door and then just reach out to those people that are where you wanna be and just say, hey, I would like to introduce myself. If there's anything I can do to help you. I'd love to shadow and learn more about what you're doing. And, you know, like I said, we, we kind of develop those connections that way through volunteering, through reaching out. And again, it, you know, it, it's not bad on a resume to say that you have either been, you know, that, that member on a committee or uh, a committee chair or have served in a board position for your local HIM association. It shows your dedication to that profession. And those are the people that are, we know are going to be successful in those roles. So thank you all, and uh, please reach out to me individually as well if you have any questions on volunteering. Hello there, my name is Kelly Cooper. Uh, my current job title is the Regional HIM, which is the Health Information and HIPAA Corporate Compliance Officer for Solaris Clinical Consulting. I'm currently in transition, and as of February 14th, I will actually be a compliance specialist at UF Health Chans, which I'm really excited about the opportunity I'm going to have there. I have been in my current position in skilled nursing and long-term care for six years, and it's been a really great adventure. It's a underserved area of health information, and it's been really great to volunteer and advocate for this area of HIM. I thoroughly enjoy volunteering, and I think that it's one of the best things I've ever decided to do, both to further my professional growth and my personal growth, and to give back and make contacts and get more engaged in health information. I have served in various roles at the regional, state, and national level. I was president-elect and president for Northeast Fahima for a short time. I was not able to enjoy that role as long as I would have liked to because I had the honor of being elected to a national position, which is my current volunteer role as a commissioner serving on the commission for Certification in Health Informatics and Information Management, or CHIM, which is the arm of AHIMA that oversees everything to do with credentialing, the job task analysis, the candidate qualifications, and things of that nature for the credentials. I've been in that role for a year and a couple months now. It's a three-year position, and I'm in the beginning of the second year. I currently serve as the chair for the subcommittee on the Certified in Healthcare Privacy and Security or CHPS credential. And I'm a member of the subcommittees for the RHIA and the CCS. Volunteering is something that I didn't realize I had a passion for until I was a student in an HIM program when my professor recommended that I run for the senator position for our student association. 
And once I got involved in the inner workings of at a professional association like the Student Association, I realized I really loved it. Being involved in organizations that oversee the quality, the guidance, and the support for health information professionals is incredibly rewarding. You meet people who work in all different aspects of health information. You get to go and meet with leaders of other organizations and really form bridges and networks to help the world see how important health information is and how we really are the glue that holds healthcare together. I started off by attending the National Hill Day when it was still able to be in person in DC and met with my state senators and representatives to talk about patient ID matching, which is still a really big push and a really big topic for AHIMA. I followed up on that by volunteering on state level committees and being a regional level committee chair. And I think that it's really important for us to go out and be a voice. There are many of our colleagues who may not have credentials or may not realize that they are considered health information professionals. And for those of us who know better, to go out and be a voice for them is really important. It helps shed a light on what we do and how we really hold the industry together. And my experience in skilled nursing has really helped with that because in skilled nursing, it's very clear how important this role is. And this role is very uncommon in skilled nursing and long-term care. I think that volunteering also lets you meet people that you might not have otherwise met and gain knowledge that you might not otherwise get in your day-to-day -day work. So I've met people from all 50 states. I've met people from Saudi Arabia, and uh, the United Arab Emirates, and Turkey, and Japan, I think it was, that I would not have met if I had not volunteered to help out with national convention or volunteering at the national level. And it's been really interesting to see how health information is growing on the global scale. On the personal side, it's helped give me confidence. It's helped, bo helped me boost my professionalism, make connections with people who have mentored me, have helped me develop my resumes and share my resumes out, and even led to me getting my new current position as uh, I made that through a connection that I made volunteering and working in health information. I really think that everybody should consider volunteering. A lot of people get scared that volunteering is gonna be a huge time commitment, but some roles require as little as an hour a month. There are some that are more intense and require more work, but I think even if you just do the hour a month, you're really doing your part to give back and make those connections that are going to build a lifelong foundation for you in health information. Katie Reynolds, I am a health information technology student at St. John's River State College, and I first started volunteering as a technology chair for NEFEMA. My goal was to network and meet people that were successful in their field and follow in their footsteps. I received so much more from that experience. In addition to networking, I've improved my employability and boosted my career prospects. In my research on how to create a college resume, I read that recruiters rank volunteer par participation higher than personal presentation when looking for prospective candidates. I also read that employers look for candidates with a range of hard and soft skills and volunteering gives you plenty of opportunities to add to your personal and professional skill set. By volunteering, you're meeting new people and developing lasting relationships. Volunteering improves your mental health and what better way to feel good about yourself than to give back to your community and make a difference in the HIMSS field. I'm Stacy Prince. I currently work as a cancer registrar at Saint, Ascension St. Vincent's, and I am also the NEFEMA treasurer. I volunteer because it helps keep me connected professionally and introduces me to all kinds of people that I wouldn't have normally been introduced to. And it allows me to stay involved and on top of any changes in our industry because our industry changes so frequently. So it's allowed me to keep on top of my CEUs and expand my network 
enormously. And I would encourage anybody to volunteer because I feel like it puts you in a place where you can further your career without even realizing the opportunities that, that would come your way because they wouldn't come your way if you didn't end up meeting these people or putting yourself into a, a new different spot. Um, and it also helps you stay on top of industry changes and grow your network.